nobody wins when the family feels. Why is D count you a sad nigga? It's a scientific proven fact you run behind the law. Like it shit way back in your blood, it shit stole your granddad and your granddad know the law. <laughs> like it's a scientific proven fact. It shit in the lab right now. Hey, your granddad and your great 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 granddad were he read it on the dinosaur. Get your the Lewis family and their neighbors lost incredible leaders of their community that day. Mobile police say Tony was shot several times, but they still don't know how Leela died, and their home was burnt to the ground. Uh, this all, this is all big stupid nigga who want to be brazy doing. This is this all nigga doing. Nigga smile, he brazy. And y'all cosigning, and he's sitting in the corner watching everything I'm doing just like this. I don't like this shit. I'm drop down, them nigga. Man, nigga don't cop, man. Get in my inbox by no nigga telling on no nigga. Cause y'all listen to these rap niggas, man. Hey, get what? Start listening to me. I ain't telling. All I like said. Cause get away, I might sit it, y'all ain't finna my seat up. We ain't going for that. Y'all already doing too much pussy shit down now. Y'all got the street niggas ran. Y'all got the dope boys ran. You got the jank boys even telling on niggas. Now y'all wanna get the rapper start telling too. Y'all gonna fit up for me. The man accused of killing rapper Honeycomb Brazy's grandparents last year. Heading to a grand jury. Terrence Watkins, one of four people charged. As we've reported, Watkins had a dispute with another rapper, OMB Peasy, who was friends with Brazy. Investigators testified they have recorded conversations of Watkins talking about killing Brazy's grandparents, Tony and Layla Lewis. After being released from jail earlier than his fans had expected, Mobile, Alabama's very own Honeycomb Brazy been on a serious run. Linking up with Birdman and dropping tracks almost every other day, all while going trending. Top five each time he dropped. The Honeycomb Brazy even dropped a track back in front of his grandparents' home, where they was burned down and came to their demise, may they rest in peace. It was a hot felt song that paints a vivid picture, like most of Honeycomb Brazy music do. It was a track titled Letter to God, released two weeks ago, with over 2.2 million views and counting. We don't pull the SU course in it like we live. I gotta ask, how that happened to my grandparent? But the real reason we here is because a couple days ago, Honeycomb Brazy went live and said the following. And this was sent to me a number of times in regards to trying to find a story that's public about this situation and present it to the family. Check it out. At all, never for him again in life. See what I'm saying? Like, I ain't on that, man. Hey, bro, I'm really a real nigga, bro, and ain't nothing in the world gonna make me be fake, bro. I never switch up, like, on that same nigga. Like, real talk, I ain't switching up on no nigga. If I stop for the nigga, man, get what? Niggas just ain't right. Niggas ain't right. I, 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 I didn't kill nigga brothers, man. I didn't, like, look, man. I killed nigga brothers in real life, like, locked up for murder, killing nigga brother, and, and steal for his brother's brothers. You see what I'm saying? Like, this real life, this is my... I still for the, I still for with the nigga brothers, who brothers I killed. Like, we still hang around each other. And you think, and they other brother don't even like me, he want to do something to me. But you think I be around the nigga brother, brothers who I killed, like, they got the same daddy. They about to sit somewhere and I run with them. You think they'll be around me if I'm fake? Like, now you killed our brother, we still for... Nigga, I'm really a real nigga, bro. I'm really like that. I'm telling y'all, I'm really silent. Like, I'm really silent. In real life, bro. Like, real talk. Now, this ain't no wrong word for lie. This black and white. This, I caught this murder case. This is black and white. You feel nigga kick the door in on me. And I had to handle my business. And I had got self-defense for it. I got self-defense for this shit. And you know, this what they war started by. This what they, all this shit really struck up by. They war, they what they had. A nigga grandma and granddaddy dead, but all this ass shit started like, yeah. But man, niggas, brother still fucking like, I was four them boy, we see each other, we yeah. And like, you know, that what it is. But like, nigga living like that, bro. I've been thinking, bro, I'm God, nigga, I ain't no rap nigga before. So over the last couple of days, I've been doing my research. I'm talking about looking at federal indictments seeing how his grandparents got connected to his beef on who was arrested. Fam, I found out so much more. Even finding out the rapper he was beefing with did a video in front of Honeycomb Brazy's grandparents' house before he was the one arrested for shooting it up. 
and taking the life of his grandparents. So before we go over this one, remember, I don't give you no ain't. I just give you the story. So with that being said, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. We're going to jump right to it. This man right here name is YSD Cap. His real name is Terrence Watkins. He was the rapper who had beef in the city with Honeycomb Brazy back early on in his career. They all grew up together, all once hung out. But like Honeycomb Brazy say, he took the life of his brother in self-defense, which is more than likely how YSD Cap knew where Honeycomb Brazy grandparents had stayed. YSD Cap, featuring another guy who ran with the circle, Johnny B, had dropped a track title, Nat Brazy, Honeycomb Brazy Diss, four years ago with a little more than 60,000 views and counting. Fam, in this video, you can see clips of Honeycomb Brazy grandfather going inside of his house. Also, you see clips of him peeking out while they doing a video in front of his home. Now I'ma say this now before we get further in the video. Johnny B end up getting paralyzed from the waist down after he was hit up after Honeycomb Brazy grandparents had lost their life. But as I mentioned, he survived. So it wasn't publicized and talked about much. Now YSD Cap went to live and talked about Honeycomb Brazy after he made that video and Honeycomb Brazy was still signed to rap a lot. He tell they mom be telling him, I don't know what you done got into, but these boys is not playing. My mom like, I'm so proud of you, son. They mom like, boy, you did not sit your head down so well. My mom was like, do that, son. Do that. Yeah, my mom was like, you need to sit your head down. They gonna kill you. My mom was like, do it, nigga. Boy, you, I, I raised a man. I'm telling you. And this all, this all, this all the big stupid nigga who want to be brazy doing. This is this all the nigga doing. Nigga smile, he brazy. And y'all co-signing that shit. And he sitting in the corner watching everything I'm doing just like this. I don't like it. I'm dropping down with them nigga. Hey, let me tell the world they police. Let me tell him, boy. Um, he dropped down, I'm going to drop some of them too. They want people to take them out and go, go, and drop some more. Because they friend them and give you that much money. <laughs> and if they get mad at you, you have to take them chains off your neck, broke the boy. J. Print got you in a little last part. Big YD and some bitches over there. What really going on? <laughs> My guy, Alfred Eyes, man. I got air fries and shit. Ain't nothing but microwave, man. I'm sitting up in the hole. I know you wish you can go home with your turn and make you some gingerbread house. Now, he made that laugh after Honeycomb Brazy mom house was shot up multiple times. Thank God she don't live there. Now, this clown was mocking the mom, a straight sucker for targeting women, a grandmother, and a grandfather. In this surveillance footage NBC 15 News obtained, you hear five shots fired on Clark Street at 2 in the morning. They came back. They keep shooting up your home. Mm-hmm, and I don't even live here because I had to leave because of that, but them fresh bullets. Tanisha Jones believes her home was the target. She wasn't home when the shots were fired, but had been at the home yesterday and believes people saw her there. They shot it up again. I can tell. I came here yesterday. And those weren't there yesterday? Not this glass, none of that. A family three doors down woke when two bullets came into their home overnight. They declined to talk on camera. Joan says this isn't the first time her home's been shot. And how many times do you think your home has been shot at? For sure, I know it's three, but now I know it's four times. Why do they keep targeting you? I don't, because they want my son and I shouldn't Jones did. Her son, Nashawn Jones, a local rapper, is also known as Honeycomb Brazy. He's currently in Metro Jail, accused of violating his probation. He was arrested back in 2016 on gun charges. In February, Nashawn's grandparents, Tanisha's parents, were killed in a mysterious shooting and fire. Mobile police can't confirm the overnight shooting is in any way connected to any other investigation. Now, Honeycomb Brazy talked about knowing these people, like Johnny B, in a track titled True Story. Slip in the same bed, with Johnny be funky, little black, yeah, yeah. 
But I told they brought So we gotta slow it down real quick, family. At this point, we know, as Honeycomb Brazy just said in that song, he took their brother out. Why is Decap brother and the other five siblings? Why is Decap, as well as the guy that Honeycomb Brazy life he took in self-defense was during South Hall's nephew? So now we know why they had a target against Honeycomb Brazy. But let's continue. But why is Decap didn't know after that live? Shortly after, his right hand man was about to tell on him. After Wise D Cap Uncle Darren Southhall was arrested for being in control of a $24 million drug empire, the leader took a plea filed on 8 23 21 for 35 years in return his cooperation. And Darren Southhall got everyone involved, including the females he had put his Rolls Royce name in. Now that plea was only five months after they was indicted. They was indicted on 4-29-2021. Now why is D-Cap right hand man was in that indictment? But he turned into an informant. Jamarcus Chambers, aka Project Baby Juicehead. That's Project Baby to the right of the screen. In a picture with Rallo and no cap. Project Baby Juice Head that went viral some years back with YSD Cap. They responded to a post that No Cap Associate had made saying they had a DJ in Alabama turn off Lil Baby music in the club. YSD Cap and Project Baby Juice Head have responded with this video. I that woman by 4 p.m. man, 4 p.m. to land. Just like I told y'all nigga last night, when y'all see me in the club, the same club y'all was at, talking about y'all made them turn baby it out. Y'all did not do that when I was in there. When y'all see me, nigga, I chop all you niggas on. Nigga, I'm gonna be bad by my dead brother, nigga. I'm gonna have sign, nigga. Y'all don't know about nigga. That y'all niggas ain't saying shit when I chop y'all out by 4 p.m. So the way y'all get on there, like y'all just walking back, baby, y'all turn baby in, baby in. Man, they gon' play baby in it, bitch. 4 p.m. to the label. 4 cent, honey, if you wanna get on there. My nigga, baby, get on y'all in. I got him off y'all in. So y'all nigga, baby, hey, man, y'all nigga, 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 y'all nigga,
South Hall said the police told JC that he needed to come with them because they could offer him protection. A couple sentences later, they also mentioned that South Hall told Watkins that police took JC to a room and asked if he wanted to be escorted out of Alabama because if he stayed, he might die. Now, during South Hall at first thought JC called the police, but then he realized he really made a threat on his life, so he left it alone. But the money was too large for him to stop talking on the phones. Now, after all that being accounted for, it was understood that Juice Head had took a five-year plea, a 5K1, in a case for being an informant. It was mainly for the information he gave authorities that didn't concern the case he was currently fighting. And this is how the feds found out about Honeycomb Brazy grandparents. Now fam, let's read the second paragraph on the first page of his 5K1. The defendant provided significant information on the lead conspirator implicated in the investigation, which resulted in the defendant's arrest. He agreed to plead guilty to the information in the instant matter, as we mentioned, and continued to provide information implicating numerous conspirators. However, while the defendant was awaiting to be sentenced in his case, he was implicated in a contraband smuggling scheme at the facility where he was being held. But check this out, family. The defendant was confronted by law enforcement officials and admitted his involvement in the scheme. While this behavior constitutes a violation of the plea agreement, the United States has weighed the significance of the information provided by the defendant against his misconduct and has determined that some departure for substantial assistance is nevertheless appropriate under the circumstances included in the assistance was information related to a double homicide which has been turned over to local authorities. Now I can only assume that this was eaten. Project Baby Juice had alive while he was in jail because it seems he knew he was coming home. He only got five years, but he was the missing puzzle to connect what happened to Honeycomb Brazy grandparents. So he reached out to him via Instagram DM. And don't mind his grandma family, I'ma try my best to read around it. But Honeycomb Brazy had reposted the message it stated, you know I would never went against you. I was just chasing that money. And you know I know how much you love your granny and grandpa. I wasn't with it. I ain't kill him, fool. It's a long story. I want to explain to you so you can see my side. It's all gonna come out though. I effed up my name too. Not to let them peas get away with what they did. <laughs> Hold up, man. Let's stop it there. He sent a cryptic message. The reason why he snitched. It's for them not to get away. That's cap. Let's continue. Them ants tried to kill me. All type of sh It get real deep. I know you probably ain't got words for me, but I wasn't with that. I can show you and explain how ever it go. I still love you. Them use me. Cross my life out. Crazy. I just wanted the money. But you see, he didn't mention why they wanted to take his life. He stole 9K from Darren Southall. Honeycomb Brazy had responded. Get your PA out my inbox. Yeah, you used to be my dog. Granny and them used to feed both of us in that cell. I know you knew. Now at this point, everyone in that operation was trying to be the first to tell to get some time cut from the leader down. That made another person get arrested for the demise of Honeycomb Brazy's grandparents. And he provided even more gruesome details when even he testified in court being the last to be arrested. Debbie, new details today about the deaths of the grandparents of local rapper Honeycomb Brazy. Tony and Leela Lewis were killed 13 months ago after a shooting and fire at their home. One of the suspects, Patrick Lewis, was in court today. News 5's Nicolette Schleisman joins us live in the studio. And Nicolette, a lot of details came out today in court. Yeah, that's right, Peter. So detectives in this case gave testimony about audio recordings between several of the suspects reportedly planning the shooting, saying in court that the recordings are sickening. The phone recordings are reportedly between Terrence Watkins and Darren Southall, as well as Southall and Jamarcus Chambers. All three are suspects in the case. The fourth suspect, Patrick Lewis, is referenced many times. That's per Mobile Police. The state says Watkins, Lewis, and Chambers were the ones who went to the home on Dr. Thomas Avenue on February 17th, 2021, and started shooting. They say Southall was encouraging them to take action. His involvement is, is um, what we call an aider and a better, which is that he was uh, helping uh, plan and organize and encouraging uh, the, the three individuals that were in the car. The state says this all began from a Facebook post from an associate of the couple's grandson, whose real name is Nashawn Jones. The state argues the post angered Watkins and he felt disrespected, so they hatched the plans. And the home was a target because it would hurt Jones. 
anyone in that house would have been a target of this attack. The Lewis family in court hearing many of the details they say they'd never heard. It was very gruesome. No one deserved, no one, not just because it was my family, but no one deserved to be treated like that. They had no remorse for human life at all. The state believes two people fired the shots, Lewis and Watkins, and they say Chambers was in the car. Mobile police say they have cell phone data that puts Lewis's phone in the area around the time of the shooting before it was turned off. But I'm not sure how that actually places him at the scene. Uh, they haven't placed the cell phone that was on the tower in his possession. The state says the shots caused a reaction starting the massive blaze that night but no official cause of the fire has been determined. A likely scenario is that the gunfire resulted in the explosion of an oxygen tank, which in turn would have caused the explosion of other oxygen tanks in the house, which would lead to the fire. And the state also alleges the suspects went to several different car dealerships and bought a car in cash specifically for this crime. Lewis's case has been bound over to the grand jury. Live in the studio, Nicolette Schleisman, WKRG News 5. Now, I guess that's what Project Baby Juice had me when he said, Hank, but well, Holmes, you was in the vehicle. You just as guilty. Speaking of the grandparents, as we wrap this video up, a moment of silence for them and loving prayers to the family as we say rest in peace once again. Fam, everybody in the group telling from the leader down, which led to more crimes being solved. And all this happened. Two beautiful souls lost their life because a young man tried to ambush his way inside of a home that belonged to Honeycomb Brazy and lost his life in self-defense. Who happens to be the nephew of a ringleader of a $24 million drug empire. Fam, y'all let me know how y'all feel about this one in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And today, I'll catch you guys on the next one.